Hello everyone. So a little video update here about the Moskva. So today it's been announced that Russia is sending the submarine salvage ship Komuna to the wreck of the Moskva. This ship isn't capable of recovering the Moskva, but it is expected to recover weapons, bodies and other sensitive material from the wreck. By itself that's not very interesting, but the Komuna is over 100 years old, having been launched in 1913, and I think that's jolly neat. It's the oldest ship in service in the Russian Navy. And I think it's quite cool that a ship so old is still in service today. And it's a pretty capable and pretty successful vessel. It's been updated since then, of course, with new parts and equipment. And it's one of the most successful salvage ships and submarine rescue ships ever. So the Komuna was laid down in 1912, launched in 1913 and officially commissioned in 1915, serving in the then Imperial Russian Navy. It was originally named Volkov and it has an unusual distinctive catamaran design. This design was chosen to accommodate docking submarines. So during its extremely long career, the Komuna has served in the Russian Revolution and two world wars. As mentioned, it is the most successful salvage ship in the world, having found seven lost submarines and a number of other vessels and even aircraft. Three of those submarines it was able to recover. So the first submarine it recovered was the Holland-class submarine AG-15. This ship sank in an accident. Now, there's not a huge amount of information on AG-15, but one source says, and I think you'll like this, the ship sunk after the captain ordered it to dive, not realising that the ship's cook had left the hatch open in order to ventilate the compartment why he was cooking soup. So a bit of a tragedy there. The AG-15 was recovered, but the crew unfortunately died before it could be raised. And in 1917, it also recovered the submarine Edianrog from a depth of 44 feet. After World War I, it served during the Russian Civil War as a submarine tender. During this time, it helped service a number of submarines and helped in the raising of a small dispatch boat. In 1928, it raised a interesting British submarine, the L-55. Now, this sub had actually been sunk in 1919 while serving as part of the Allied intervention in the Russian Civil War. The Komuna raised it and the L-55 was actually put into Russian service. She was used by Russia for training before being scrapped in the 50s. So the L-55 has quite an interesting story of its own. I think it's pretty cool that it sat on the bottom of the water for so long before the Komuna raised it and then was actually able to resurface it and served into the 50s as well. That's pretty amazing. Now, now let's return back to the Komuna. So the ship continued its steady service, raising a number of boats and small vessels as well as a crashed aircraft. This was in the pre-war area, pre-war years. Then during World War II, the Komuna was based in Leningrad, serving during the long siege of Leningrad. She served with distinction during World War II and at the end of the war, was rewarded with a medal for the defence of Leningrad because of its stellar service. So let's have a look at why she was awarded this medal. It was well and truly deserved. So during this time period, early on in the war, she recovered four KV tanks, two tractors and 31 vehicles which had fallen through the ice road at Lake Ladoga. She also repaired six M-class submarines. During the war as well, she raised the Shuka class submarine 411, a medium sized sub of just over 500 tons. She raised the tugboat Ostra, 
two schooners and some smaller utility and patrol vessels. In 1943, the Comuna recovered another aircraft, an Illusion Il-2 attack aircraft. Incidentally, this was one of the coolest attack aircraft of the war. 1944 was a particularly good year for the Comuna. She recovered 14 wrecks of various sorts, totalling over 11,000 tonnes and repaired 34 ships. So you can see why she and her crew were awarded the medal. She served with distinction and did a lot of good during World War II. So after the war, she carried on her good work. In 1956, she located the submarine M200. Now, the M200 was sunk in an accident after it collided with the Russian destroyer Statny. Attempts were made to rescue the crew, which were thwarted because of the bad weather. Divers went down and discovered that the crew had tried to escape on their own, but the first man to open the hatch had died there, blocking it for the rest, so the M200 was never actually recovered. In 1957, though, she raised the submarine M256. Now, this sub sank during a gale. One of its diesel engines exploded and the crew evacuated to the deck. Ships nearby couldn't rescue the crew because of the gale, which was causing problems and hampering rescue efforts, and the 256 eventually sunk. Only seven of the ship's 35 crew were rescued, and the Comuna eventually helped, or eventually raised the submarine from the depths. In the 1970s, the Comuna helped in the search for a missing Su-24, and in 1984 was due to leave service and be transferred to the Russian Academy of Sciences. This transfer was eventually cancelled, and the ship was then literally looted, so it had to be almost completely refitted before re-entering service. She is now called a rescue ship, and is outfitted with a British-built submarine rescue submersible that can operate to depths of 1,000 metres. So there you have it, a short history of the oldest ship in the Russian fleet. The Comuna has definitely lived a long and interesting life, and I quite like that such an old ship is still in service. I hope she continues plodding on for many more years, and once retired gets turned into a museum, rather than be scrapped. It would be a nice, happy ending for this old workhorse. Thanks for listening, and take care.